when I started learning my first language, that was Tagalog or Filipino, I was down. I didn't know how to go about it. And then people were all over. They are telling me you can't do it, blah, 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 blah. So when you are in such a situation, what do you do? That's why I've come with this, I've come up with this video that is called Be Delusional. Okay, I'm going to explain it to you through the whole video. And I'm going to tell you about um, like how I have improved in Tagalog. Okay, because when I started learning Tagalog, as I've said earlier, like I didn't have anyone who was uh, by my side that, that time. And I was just starting. So I was naive. I didn't know what was there in the world of language learning. I didn't know the hard things that people go through. And uh, so, and I had a very low self-esteem. I had a very lower self-perception, like the way I was looking at myself. And that made me to, like, I, I, I used to reach at some point that I was learning, but people were telling me, no, just stop. I don't know what, what, you can't learn languages. And I could feel like, like, you feel demot demotivated. Okay, I, I used to feel demotivated. So if you are someone like me, the way I was, this video is for you. We are going to talk about be dilutional. So this is the stages that we are going to go through. The first stage, I'm going to tell you the definition of dilution. Because maybe you might be thinking that I'm talking about the dilution that... Uh, it's not reality, but just to it, I'm going to tell you about it. The second stage, I'm going to tell you which delusional or which delusion I'm talking about. The third stage, I'm going to tell you, to, tell, to talk to you about challenges, the top five challenges that people are facing and how you can overcome those challenges to meet your goals. Okay? And then I'm going to finish with my story in language learning and number six of course i'm going to tell you how to overcome those challenges number five step number five step number three i'm going to tell you the challenges and step number four five i'm going to tell you how to overcome those challenges okay so what is delusional what is delusional here are some synonyms of the word delusional it means unrealistic confused okay deranged, neurotic, paranoid, and prete pretentious. People call it the Lulu, okay? The Lulu, the way they call it in um, the slang term, the way they call it in the slang term. And what are the synonyms of the illusion? The illusion means an illusion, a dream, a dream, okay? A fantasy, to daydream, a vision, a vision and reality, hallucinations, idea, and a nightmare. So the illusion literally means, um, or it is often related to social media to describe to to describe someone who holds unrealistic or overly idealistic beliefs or fantasies. But I'm not going to talk about that one. I'm going to talk about being delusional, like overcoming people who are around you. Okay, you know, when you are learning languages, people are going to think that you are delusional. So I'm talking about delusional, delusion in that aspect. People who are around you are going to think you are not acting in a normal way. Okay, so they're going to see you as if you are in your own world. Sometimes, yes, it is, it is true, but don't take it, um, don't take it as if, don't take it like negatively, don't let it weigh you down, okay? When people see you as delusional, as this person who is just learning things, learning I don't know what, like they might see you as a delusion person, a delusional, a delusion person, sorry, you are delusional. Because you have a dream, you have things that don't seem realistic to them, okay? To them, don't seem realistic to them. 
but you are not confused you you sometimes you are pretentious because there are some things that are needed in language learning for example pretending sometimes like not pretending in a bad way but pretending for you to learn something um have you ever heard of uh, this thing fake it to, till you make it fake it till you make it sometimes you need to fake some things if you want to achieve them you fake them and then you go towards them to really achieve those things that you wanted okay so that is what i mean by being delusional i don't mean like having unrealistic expectations for example um i'm going to learn swahili in three weeks like for example there are videos on youtube where people say i've learned swahili in my favorite is this one i'm not going to say the person on the channel but i saw a video that someone had posted i think it's a guy someone had posted saying i learned swahili in two months and i just looked at it and um I think I went and watched a bit of it and I just I don't know I don't I'm not sure if I finished it but yeah I'm not sure if I finished the whole of that video but he was saying a bit of some things were making sense yeah but and then at the end yes actually I finished it at the end he said yeah I have learned Swahili in three months but I have not learned everything in three months so it was like he was still a beginner. Okay, so when you see those videos on YouTube, that's, that's being delusional. You cannot learn a language in three months, even polyglots. You, learning a language is about learning the culture, learning the things that are there for you to be connected. Have you ever heard of this thing that people say, when a polyglot speaks in another language, like their characteristics usually change. It's because they relate with that language. And when you relate with that language, of course your characteristics are going to change. Okay? So that's what I'm talking about. Okay? That's the delusion that I'm talking about. Okay, now let's go to the challenges that people face in language learning. Challenges that people face in language learning. Ch challenge number one is lack of practice. Lack of practice. Why do people f uh, face these challenges? Because people usually say, I don't have time. Yeah, you remember the way you usually say, I don't have time. I'm doing this. Uh, I have to be the kids. I have to go and do this. I have to cook. I have to do the dishes. I have blah, blah, blah. I don't have time. So I don't practice. That is number one. And so I'm going to give you a problem and a solution for us to finish things fast and for all. So... Practice is not about you sitting down and starting to, for example, watching things and, uh, like, it's not about, it's not, practice doesn't involve just you sitting down and focusing on the language that's there, there. Polyglots don't learn like that. If you learn like that, you are going to, you are going to lose your morale because as a human being, you, you're going to require changes. You're going to want changes. And doing the same thing every day is going to make you, like, tired. So, what I suggest if you are a person who is saying, I lack time for practice, I don't practice. This is what I can tell you. Uh, practice is not about sitting down all the time and uh, going through grammar. And actually grammar, we are going to talk about that point at the very last point, number five about grammar and syntax. I'm going to tell you about that. So practice is not about sitting down and watching things in that language and learning grammar. No, actually I rarely run, learn grammar, but of course I learn grammar. It is quite important to learn grammar. So in practice, what you can do, for example, uh, when you say I don't have time because I want to cook, I want to do dishes, I want to walk, to have a walk for my well-being, to go for a walk, I want to work out, I want to blah, blah. So when you are doing that thing, for example, when you are cooking, continue cooking, no problem. But you can take your headphones, you can take your earphones or your earpods and put uh, someone speaking in that language. I'll give you an example. In my French, when I was, I, I, just, I had started learning French, that was in January, so I didn't know anything in French. What I did is that I downloaded a video of French with Elisa. 
Elisa, and she was talking about uh, how to start learning French. So I, I was not, I didn't know anything that she was saying in the video. I knew what the video was talking about, but I didn't know anything she was saying in the video. So what I used to do is that when I arrived at work in the morning, I used to, uh, when I arrived at work in the morning, I, I, I take breakfast when I arrive. Okay, when I arrive in the morning, I take breakfast. So what I usually used to do is that as I take breakfast, I used to listen to her. I had downloaded a video. So I listen, I listen, but I'm not understanding anything. So that is what I'm telling you. For example, if you are in the kitchen cooking, just listen. Doing dishes, do, doing dishes, just listen. Or maybe you can write something in the morning for 10 minutes. Just write something. Or when you are um, um, watching a video, when you want to watch a video, try to watch it in that language, okay? Instead of just entertainment, have entertainment and language at the same time, okay? Your phone, change the language in your phone. For example, if it is English, you can put it in Swahili. My phone, I have not changed the whole of my phone, the language, but I changed different apps. WhatsApp, I changed it. I've recently changed it to French. It was in Spanish. YouTube is still in Spanish. I don't know. I have two YouTube accounts. The other account is in Italian and I have um, Facebook in Filipino. Yeah, so you can change your arts and so forth. Practice is not all about sitting and doing everything. The other thing is fear of speaking with strangers. One thing I'm going to tell you is that ask yourself, why are you learning this language? You are learning this language to speak with other people. So you need to overcome that fear. You need to overcome that fear. How can you overcome that fear? You can overcome that fear by starting to speak with yourself in the house. So that's why I was telling you that when you start learning languages, people can see you as being delusional. Because you will start speaking in the house. For example, I do something called... Uh, practical intentional or deliberate practice okay i do it and when i do that i usually i usually write a paragraph of so of something but do that when you are a bit advanced in a language i write a paragraph or maybe not a paragraph a page or two pages then i talk about um uh, that thing for example right now i'm doing in italian and uh, after writing i talk about that thing that i just summarize what i have written okay you can do something like that and when you start doing like that you gain confidence and in starting to speak just start by telling someone mambo like start by greeting and then get to know that person like are you an introvert or an extrovert that is something to figure out as well if you are an introvert know how you usually approach people like you you need to start small start by greeting going deeper, deeper, small by small. But if you are an extrovert, of course, you can, you can start by greeting and everything and everything and everything. Okay? That is how you go <coughs> about it. And if you want to know more about that, there's a video that I'll put down in the description box below. Go and watch it. It is on YouTube. I'll put a PDF for you to download to see all the links of the videos that I, I have put in there. Lock, lack of motivation or let me say loss of motivation when you lose motivation just ask yourself why did i start learning this language your why is very important and it is going to encourage you really so much okay don't just sit there and say no i can't continue i don't know what remember this person in the bible okay uh, this person in the Bible who was suffering from a certain disease, I'm not sh quite sure. I was talking about this man that was um, living beside, was staying beside a pool. And when Jesus saw him, he asked him, like, why are you seated here and will people go inside that pool to get healed? And he said, sir, I have no man to put me into the pool. When the water is stirred up, but while I am, uh, but while I am coming another step, another steps down before me. So he said that someone 
goes when that person is he was going because he was sick so he was a bit slow so when he's going to get into the pool another person jumps in before him and jesus what did jesus told him tell him sorry jesus asked do you want to be made well so do you really want to learn swahili okay do you really want to learn swahili and that's when uh, that's when he told the man have faith okay i'm putting it in my own words have faith, uh, take up your bed and walk. Take up your bed and walk. That's what I'm going to tell you as well. Take up whatever you have and walk. Okay? Take up whatever you have and walk. Start learning Swahili. It is a walk. It is a journey that you are going to encounter. A lot of uh, distractions, a lot of things. So take up your bed, start walking. Take up whatever you have. Don't say that I need to have a tutor, I need to have this book, I need to... When I started, I didn't have all of that. And even now, there are some things I don't have. But I'm taking each step of the day and walking. Because I know there is somewhere I want to reach. Okay, have that thing in mind. And about that person goes hand in hand with unrealistic, which is number four, unrealistic expectations and comparison okay so that young uh, that man was 38 years had said 38 years old sorry there like sitting there when people were jumping into the pool 38 years so maybe that person was comparing with comparing himself with other people these people have energy they can go and jump so just as you maybe you can be comparing yourself seeing a polyglot and saying Oh, polyglots can learn languages very fast, uh, they are talented. Or No, it's not true. It's not true. It's about your ability to continue and continue and continue no matter what comes your way. No matter what comes your way. Have you read this book by, I'm forgetting her name, Angela Duck, Duckworth. It is called Grit. Okay, it is going to tell you that it is not all about talent, it is not all about, I don't know what, it's about your ability to persevere because you have passion for that thing. So don't compare yourself with anyone, don't have unrealistic expectations, I'm going to learn Swahili in three months, and then after three months you're asking myself, why is my level still here? I was supposed to... No, no. It's good to make goals and want to say, um, for example, I want to be able to know this in Swahili after this month. But when it reaches that time and you don't know, have mercy on yourself and don't start telling yourself that, why am, don't I still know? I should have known this. By the way, that is something that I usually see with my students and I usually tell them, it is not, um, it is not having... You are not having mercy to yourself. Like you are not feeling sorry for yourself. Not like feeling pity for yourself. But you need to, to take it easy with yourself. Okay? You are also a person. Okay? Don't tell yourself that I, sh I should have known this. Why am I so stupid? Why? No, don't tell yourself that. Okay? The other one is... So I'm going to tell you again. Okay? Pick up your bed and walk. Get up. Pick up your bed and walk. In Swahili, okay, if you are learning Swahili, get up, pick whatever you have and start walking with it. You don't have to have everything to start. Get up, pick up whatever you have and start walking. Be delusional. And the fifth point is about grammar and syntax. Many people, when they learn languages, and I was here as well, I was here, when I started learning Filipino or Tagalog, when they learn languages, they know the focus thing is grammar, but that is false. That is false. I came to know that is false. Actually, after listening to this polyglot called Luca Lampariello, I'm not sure if I have pronounced his name correctly. Okay, I have. I list. I listened to his talk about two years ago, and that's when my brain started changing. Because I was also focused in grammar. But Luca was saying, um, what you need to do is to immerse yourself in that language. And then after that, start learning grammar out of curiosity. So, 
the question can be like I once told someone this thing and they asked me how do you mass in your, yourself in a language and you don't know anything you know you can be listening to a language but you don't understand anything so how do you start you start by grammar actually so you start by the simple things for example in Swahili you start by knowing kuwa kuwa na you start by knowing the present past and future tense you know the easy things then after knowing those easy things go start reading stories listening to things writing things and then learning grammar out of that curiosity because when you go to approach a book for example you are asking yourself out of curiosity let's say in swahili you are asking yourself um why are they using the um uh, why are they putting ku for example um which thing uses ku in swahili nitakapo kuja for example when you're using po you need to have ku nitakapo nita you need to have ka sorry when you're using the past tense you say nilipokuja nilipokuja but when it's the future tense you say nitakapo kuja when i will come nitakapo kuja so you might start asking yourself why are they using ka why are they using ka and then when you go to my grammar videos for example i explain to you the uses of ka you are going to get that grammar and you won't forget because you learn grammar out of curiosity remember when you were a child you learn the language without grammar Okay, you absorbed the language. You absorbed the language. But when you went to school, you started learning grammar. And you understood because you had absorbed that language already. So use that method. And if it is effective, comment down below. That was all about this video. Remember to be delusional. Not the other negative of delusional, but the delusional that I have just told you about in this video. Thank you so much for watching this video and like, share, subscribe to this channel uh, for us to keep, for our community to keep on growing and growing and for us to continue sharing the, this content with the whole world for people who want to learn languages. Okay, if you liked this video so much and you want to support me financially, you can buy me a coffee down below in the description. Thank you again and I'll see you in the next video. Adiós.